France got devalued, colonized, rearranged, reintroduced, lubricated, sauteed, barbecued, char-grilled, and decommissioned. That was a beat down in your own house. Are Italy back? First off, do I owe him an, an apology? That's what the streets are saying. Do I owe your boy an apology? Um, simple answer is um, maybe I do. We called him barcode. And the reason why we called him barcode is because it was like, who the heck is this freaking dude? And what the hell is he doing here? So it was out of disrespect that we called him barcode. But shout out to barcode. Bro, the guy's been balling. So he's not. So it's one thing to ball for PSG in I'm loving it. But it's another thing where for France coming in against a good side who will talk about Italy, this guy's playing well. So again, great to score in the first 13 seconds. A really damn good goal because he won possession, dispossession, quality finish, good composure. But just overall, it's like, I'll be real with you. He looks more dangerous on that left side than Mbappe has done in the last two or three years, which is freaking insane. So, again, from the GOAT analyst to you, Barcola, no longer Barcode. We can't call him Barcode anymore. You're out of the brick academy. I have to give him his kudos. And, guys, that is, that is where it ends in terms of positive stuff to say about France. So, Barcode. I said, sorry, Barcola, I'm half up, I apologize, I'm sorry, you are now a quality player. And I think this is actually one of France's most exciting players. And maybe one of other good points for France is Olise, that was a, a, a good debut. His first game for France should have been taken at the Euros, had a very good, good showing. So for Barcola and Olise, the future looks very bright for France. So that was the 1 0, and that's what ends for France. That's an amazing goal. <laughs> you see, guys, if you've played football, one of the hardest things to do in football is volley the ball. Because you have to have timing. You have to have precision. You have to know when to where to strike the ball. And then you have to have that direction and the right amount of power. Too much power, that thing goes to freaking Krypton. So for DeMarco, who... DeMarco on his day is a very good flank player. Very effective. And I thought he was actually one of the best players on the pitch in that UCL final between Inter and Man City. But that was a quality goal. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've, I actually, I have it saved um, on my bookmarks on Twitter because I'm like, that's it. That's insane. What it? See, that's a niche. See, there are finishes and there are niches. That was not a, a good finish. It wasn't a good finish. That was a niche. That is what you call a freaking niche. So for DeMarco, amazing. And once that goal was scored, Italy ran France rocket. I mean, it was insane. I don't know what I, I was looking at here. Because, again, in the first half, it just kept on getting better and better and better. That second half, I cannot remember the last time France got outplayed that badly in their own house. Scratch that. In their house, wherever. I don't know the last time another team made France look completely useless. Because France, for the last five, six years, I've been a very robust team. Like, very few teams have outplayed France, where France just look rugged. Italy destroyed them on a footballing level. Forget the scoreline. If you watch that game, specifically the second half, on a footballing level, Italy ripped France a new one. <laughs> Italy taught France a footballing lesson. And what makes it insane is I'm looking, I don't see Del Piero. I don't see a Camerunese. I don't see a PLO. I don't see a Totti. <laughs> so I don't see any of these like amazing super players. I see a pretty decent team. And I see coaching. And we're going to talk about coaching. But you see, it's one thing to score those goals. But what's football about? Yes, it's about scoring goals. It's also about defending. I'm trying to score against you. I'm trying to stop you to score against me. He'd be proud. He'd, he, 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 the guy back there, he'd be proud. He'd be proud. Maldini would be proud. 
they defended. Those guys defended. Like Italy, they def- they defended. They defended. But oh, I had my move on for forgot that, bro. Now, obviously, the second goal, like, I think it's the third goal. Because Fratesi scored the second goal. That third goal, first of all, that third goal started from the defender. The defender completely bamboozled the France attacker, opened up space for him, switched it to the right. The guy looks up, and I think it's um, Destiny Odoge on the left, put it across, and Odoge, quality, great composure, amazing decision making, finds Raspadori, great touch. That's bamboozled Saliba and the Dinesh. That's goal. That was literally from defense to attack. That was total football. Italy were clowning France in their own house. Just the level of football of that goal, I was like, it's insane. It's insane. But beyond just the goals, the defender was amazing. This reminded me back of when they used to have those guys, Maldini, Nesta, Cannavaro. Because the defender that Italy put forth was, because you see, I've always said that, see, growing up, defending was an art. And defenders were heralded as some of the top players. There is not a single defender living today, currently actively playing, that I would put in the same stratosphere as those great defenders. None. But Italy were the guys who said, no, defending is an art. Defending is a high skill. And where Italy, they took pride in defending. Where Literally, if they get a block or a save, they actually share it like a goal. And watching them just say, no, 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 no. France, you go that illegal could, you are not scoring a single goal. Thou shalt not pass. They invoked thou shalt not pass. They invoked that bill. It was a bill. They invoked a new bill called thou shalt not pass. And they said, no, France, you are not scoring. So putting their head there, putting their legs there, blocking, putting their lives on the line, they put their wives, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, both on the line to say, nope, you are not passing. That's Bolton's not entering that fishness for a second time. So, superb from Italy. And guys, you see, I asked the, I, I posted on Twitter and I said that, this is not the same team I saw the Euros. <laughs> that team I saw the Euros specifically, that team against Switzerland, it looks nothing like the guys that I saw in this game today. So guys said, look, Spalletti did not have time. So remember, it was a quick turnover from qualification to preparing for the Euro. So he didn't really have time to implement. Let's keep it a stack. This Italy team are nothing like these guys. Nothing. Look at, look at Tony, Grosso, Totti, Camoranese. Um, Zambrotta, Piero, and you don't even have Del Piero in this state. So none of them are there. So the fact that there are some decent players here, there are some decent players in this team, but not a single player apart from, actually no, no, what do you mean? There's not a single player in that team I saw against France that would get in the squad of the 06 World Cup team or the 2000 Euro team. No, none. So what we're seeing here is amazing coaching. Why are Napoli trash now? Because of Spalletti left. The reason why Napoli won that Syria, it wasn't Osime. It wasn't Kivicha. It wasn't Kim. They all played their parts. The most important piece of Napoli winning that Syria was Spalletti. Once he left, they became trash. <laughs> so it's obvious that still, so, the, so Spalletti leaves, all those other players stay. Spletty leaves and you suddenly become bricks. Spletty was the dude. So what I just saw today was superb coaching. Absolutely amazing coaching because the team from the defense, the midfield, the attack, the organization, the cohesion, the chemistry, the understanding of every single player. It was amazing. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So if you can just build upon this, Italy could be a very serious force moving forward. Um... They're going to keep, so they're going to keep persistent playing Mbappe as striker. Mbappe was never going to, I, I, I could have told you this before the ref blew the whistle out. Mbappe was never going to score in that game. It simply doesn't work. <laughs> it simply doesn't, it do, doesn't work. Like what Barcola was doing in that game, Mbappe should have, should have been doing. So as I watched the game, I'm like, 
because um, see guys when you watch football for so long like I have you have to appreciate people who know how to play specific roles the guys who just know how to play the role as striker playing in the center is very different from playing out wide it's very different you would only know if you played football if anybody who's played football would understand that there is a massive massive difference between playing in the center and playing out wide it simply is. And I was looking at Mbappe, I was like, look, it's obvious Mbappe needs a Giro. Mbappe needs a Benzema because he needs that striker to play off of. If he is that striker that he should be playing off of, it ain't going to work. It simply ain't going to work. And you could just see it simply doesn't work. But guys, the reason why I'm doing this video, obviously, it's they were amazing, but a big reason I'm doing this video. <laughs> Do you know that this guy has been the manager of France since 2012? Since 2012. That's 12 years. He's been the manager of this team for 12 years. You, you see, ever so often, you need, you need new managers because a new manager is a new ideas new instructions and refresh things, specifically when a specific cycle of players go through. Because not only do the current players need something new, new players coming in, which is a newer generation, perhaps need a voice that represents them, i.e. in the modern game. France were hor horrendous at those Euros. They were terrible. So you see, people will say, oh no, it's only a friend, it's only friendly. No, this was not a friendly. France were taking this seriously. And beyond that, it's a bigger issue because I can see a through line from the performances at the Euros and what happened here. Because Gid can only take you so far. There ain't no Pogba in this team. Griezmann is clearly getting much older. Giro obviously is now past it. So those key pieces that you had, they're no longer there. They're no longer there. And you can just see that for Deschamps, you're past it. Your time should have run out. At the end, at the end of those Euros, especially the way it ended and how France played, you should have stepped down. You should have stepped down. Like, I just don't understand how Deschamps can take this team forward. That's the key thing. How can they take them forward? Because this group is not the same as the previous group. You see, that group in 2018, Matuidi, Kante, Pogba, it fits Deschamps' pragmatic style. This new group, you have Olise coming through. You've got Bacola coming through. You have the kid from PSG, the midfielder, 17, 18-year-old coming through. Name slips my mind. So these are a different set of players. And for me, I don't think Deschamps is the right manager for these sets of players because I just believe that his philosophy is at odds with this particular group and it just doesn't fit this particular group. It's time. It's time. It's, it's time. It's, it's like, yeah. Are we really going to see Deschamps take France to... Yeah, it's, that's going to be... No, hold up. It's going to be a fourth World Cup. Because remember, he took them to the 2014 World Cup, 2018 World Cup, 2022 World Cup. Deschamps is going to take them to four World Cups? Come on, bro. No, no, no. That's enough. You've Three World Cups is crazy. Four World Cups? No. It's time for Zidane to come in and bring in just something new. France need a new voice. They need a new energy. The energy is stale. That's the word. I found it. Thank you. I found the word. The energy in this team, it has gone stale. And in order to cure that, you need a different energy. You need a renewed energy. And that renewed energy is Zid. Zid. You realize that he's won the World Cup on Euros as a player. You realize that he's the only manager to go back to back to back to back to back to back to back, to back of UCLs. If Zidane wins the World Cup as a manager, 
The only guy that can talk to him is Beckenbauer. <laughs> so Zidane is trying to complete football. Right now, if Zidane wins the World Cup as a manager, bro, he might just be the greatest figure ever. Like the only guy that can talk to him would be Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer is the only other individual who can talk to Zidane if Zidane wins the World Cup as a manager. But it's time. 2026, Zidane has to come through because all oh, this is exciting. Bacola is exciting. These guys, they, they, they're exciting. So come on, man. Come on, bro. Like, like Let's get Zidane up in this piece. Because, bro, I'm ready for that hangout. I'm ready for that hangout. If Zidane says, what's up, let's say, manage a fucking World Cup. I'm ready for that fucking hangout. But we look at this shump. You're being a ball hog, bro. You see, I see, do you know why this is pissing me off so much? Because I just know that Zidane can work with his group. And I know that this group, this young group, seeing Zid, knowing what Zid is and what he's about. And bro, there are very few football minds that are like this. Like Zid. Because it is, I can see it, it's so obvious that this, this team, they've gone stale. Bro, you got beat down for bowling wise by Italy. You see, I told you, forget the score line. I'm not a stats merchant. On a footballing level, Italy taught you a footballing lesson. The football Italy were playing, France should have been playing that football at home. <laughs> it's like Italy were proactive, France were reactive. And France, with those talents of players, you should be a proactive team. But that's not what Deschamps is about. Deschamps is a pragmatic manager who is reactive. It's time to be proactive, take the game to the opponents. And that's where Zid comes through! It's time for Zid to take that freaking France into the freaking 2026 World Cup, man. The heck, Deschamps? You can have four World Cups, bro. The heck? Think about becoming a Football Hot member. If you're a desktop merchant, just click on the join button below, over here. Or if you're a mobile phone merchant, just click on the join button below the video over here and join the true elite content crack addicts. Peace.